Hello, today I wanted to share with you some products that I've changed my mind about, both for the good and for the bad. Some of these products I didn't really like for one reason or another, or I was a bit apprehensive about, but I either retried them or tried them in a different way, and now I'm really enjoying them. Other products I really liked, and for one reason or another, over time, they're just not working for me the way they used to. I have no problems coming here and telling you that my initial thoughts were wrong. I've done a 180, I've changed my mind, and I hope this is a little bit helpful. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. If you're not subscribed, I do hope you consider hitting that subscribe button before the end of this video. All right, let's get into these products that I have completely changed my mind about. I wanna start on a positive note and start with something that I didn't really like and I've really grown to love over time. I think this is the one that is more of a category of products rather than just one specific product. Let's talk about double-ended brushes for a second. I have done a complete 180 with how I feel about these. Now I do love having all of my brushes at arm's reach standing up in a jar, in a brush holder. And that's one of the reasons why I just really didn't get along with double-ended brushes except for using them for travel purposes. I'm a multitasker, but over time, specifically throughout the last year, I've been reaching for several different double-ended brushes. There's a couple that I'm showing here. This one's from Hourglass, this one's from Persona Cosmetics, and I'll list a few more in the description box. If you're on mobile, just hit the title below the video. If you're on desktop, look below that title and hit the words show more and you'll get the drop-down description box. Everything I talk about in this video, as well as what I'm wearing, will be listed in the description box. So while I do need to lay them down or strategically place them in my stand-up brush holders, I just find the quickness with which I can get ready is worth having these in my collection, my day-to-day -day collection. For instance, this is super soft and I can use this for powder, bronzer, under eye setting powder, as well as highlighter and blush. I can get a lot done with this brush and I can save time if I'm in a big rush by not reaching for other brushes. This one I can highlight and do my under eye setting powder and I can do blush and contour if I want to. I just find a lot of use with double-ended brushes that I did not really appreciate before and I do now. I like a good brow pen. I feel like there's really nothing else that can mimic a true brow hair look aside from microblading better than a brow pen. Brow pencils and powders are a little bit softer and brow gel takes longer. MAC seems to be the first one that really came out in a big way that a lot of people paid attention to and I really enjoyed it when it first came out and I really tried to make it work for me because I like a good brow pen and I did come on here and talk about how much I like this brow pen. What what I didn't like about it was that I really had to concentrate to use a light hand and all of the shades that I tried leaned a little bit red. Since that MAC brow pen launched, there have been a lot of competitors that have come out on the market that have a finer tip. And that means that I don't have to concentrate as hard to use a light hand. Their tones don't lean as red. They lean more neutral or ashy if that's what you need. And I find now that I really don't like that matte brow pen. I never reach for it. It's just too much effort and I don't like the tone. I have other ones that I really love and some are from the drugstore, which is absolutely fantastic. I did think it was a great option at first, but now not so much. I have very sensitive skin plus rosacea. So trying new anti-aging treatment products can be a little bit tricky. A lot of products are too harsh for my skin. I get asked a lot why I use over-the-counter retinols instead of prescription tretinoin. And my answer is always that I tried prescription years ago and it tore up my skin and I've been scared of it ever since. So for the past couple of months, I've actually been using a prescription custom formula that's working beautifully beautifully for my skin and it's not too harsh. So this portion of the video is sponsored by Curology so that I can share with you my experience and tell you a little bit more about how Curology works because I know some of you are a little bit curious. So Curology creates a custom prescription formula based on your skin's needs. 
you upload makeup free pictures and take a skin quiz and they pair you with your dermatology provider who analyzes your skin and creates your formula. I'm 45. I'm concerned with anti-aging skincare. I know a lot of you are like me and concerned with that also or preventative skincare. So my custom formula contains 0.009% tretinoin, which is very mild, yet it is stronger than what I was using before because my skin did need to get used to it at first. And that's going to help address the fine lines, the elasticity, and all the good stuff that prescription tretinoin addresses. It's also got 4% niacinamide that I love for refining the pores, and it's got 5% tranexamic acid, which is really great for pigmentation, sunspots, things like that. I use a pea size amount at night. More is not better. It absorbs into the skin really nicely. I start it out every other night to get my skin used to it, and now I'm using it every night. Your formula can evolve and change with you if you want to tweak it. You just connect with your dermatology provider. It's very, very easy. It is cruelty free and vegan and certified by Leaping Bunny. I've already noticed that my skin has been looking more even and more smooth since I've been using it and I'm anxious to see even more changes over time. You can get your first month free and only pay $4.95 for shipping and handling and they have a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you are not happy, you can get a full refund. So this is a fairly new product that I really thought I liked at first and actually I like the way it performs but the more I used it the less I liked it and I'll tell you why. I really love this brand overall so I really hate that I don't like this product but I mean everything can't be a hit from even our favorite brands right? So this is the Pharmacy Whipped Greens Oil-Free Foaming Cleanser. I feel like my lighting all of a sudden is just all over the place. Uh, it's bright one minute and then dim one minute. The clouds are just going crazy outside. I do like the way this performs. It cleanses the face really nicely. It's soap-free, oil-free, it's pH balanced, it cleans pores really well. It's got sodium PCA in it, which is a really nice ingredient to have in your skincare routine, and it's great for oily combination skin, which is what I have. I mean, I do have some surface dehydration because of the prescription tretinoin, but it doesn't strip my skin, which is what I love. It's the scent, and I don't mind a scented cleanser if it's not overwhelming, but there's something about the smell of this cleanser that overwhelms me. It's just every time I use it, I have to tolerate the scent and their other products aren't like this for me. It's just this one. And so I finally decided I've just tried it enough and I can't keep using it. And I hate that because I really do like the way it performs. And I did like it at first. I think I even told you guys I liked it at first and I did. I don't know if I've gotten more sensitive with scents over the past few months or what, but I just, I can't use it anymore. It's, it's, it's bothering my nose. This is one product that's just not working for me. This product, this store has a cult following. I might get some haters for this, but I feel how I feel. And I will say I have probably about eight of these in my bathroom right now. Bath and Body Works Lotion. Please don't come at me for this. I have a reason. I have a very, very good reason. Now, if you don't have dry body skin, you may not get this, but I do. I have very dry body skin that can get ashy looking and, and flaky very, very easily. And when this is in my regular rotation, that happens regularly. And for years, I used this and loved it because they have some really lovely scents. And I just thought this is how my skin is. This is what I have to live with. So a few months ago, I went back to my Kiehl's lotion and I started using the Skin Fix AHA lotion. I'll alternate the two and sometimes I'll use just the Kiehl's. I don't have dry body skin when I use a good lotion. And I alternate some others in between. And I, again, I'll list those down below. When I use those regularly, I don't get dry, flaky, ashy body skin. So I'm thinking, wow, this is great. And I started rotating some of these back into my routine. The ashy skin showed up again. These are just not nourishing enough for my dry skin. They bring back that horrid condition every single time. So these are just not appropriate for my dry skin. It's a product that I used to love. And when I was younger, my skin wasn't so dry, they were fine, but now they're pretty much unusable for me, unfortunately. This is a product that everyone seemed to love when it first launched. And I mean, they continue to love it to this day. I thought it was fine. I just, you know, didn't get the it factor. I used it here and there and then it just kind of sat at my makeup table 
unused. I don't know what made me pick it up at some point over the past year and start incorporating it into my makeup routine more and more. And I really grew to love it over the past year. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And some of you are probably going to think that I'm crazy. Why did I not love this from the get go? I'm not someone that can use something so radiant all over my face because I am oily combination. And it made me a grease ball when I tried to use it all over my face. I did try to use it, you know, just on high points of the face and it was fine under my foundation. I didn't really like mixing it in with my foundation. And then when I used it as a highlighter, I just kind of thought, well, I mean, I've got highlighters that do that. It, it was fine. But this past year, I've been mixing it in with my under eye concealer. I have dry textured under eyes. And so this year I thought, why don't I put a couple of dabs of that while I'm dabbing on my concealer and we'll see what happens. I've really been liking that effect. It's very flattering and age friendly. I extend it out and do the highlighting thing before my powder goes on and I really like the cheek lifting effect it gives. So yeah, I guess I have been strategically placing it in various areas of the face, sometimes the tip of the nose, the cupid's bow, above the brow, all along here under the eye. And I've just really been using it more on a daily basis in my own way. It's become kind of a staple. And when I first got it, I just did not see that happening at all. I'm in shade three, by the way, if you're curious. You can see my foundation shades over on my blog. The link is in the description box down below. I do have a less expensive alternative for this down below as well in the description box. I really enjoy this so much now and kind of can't live without it. And when I first got it, I never would have thought I would be at that point with Hollywood Flawless Filter. I just shared 10 drugstore makeup products that make me feel flawless. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have it linked here for you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. If you wanna see extra bonus content, I would love to have you join the Stephanie Marie Circle. There's more details on the different levels. If you're on desktop, hit the join button. If you're on any platform, you can look in the description box and hit the join this channel link and see details there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!